We'll now solve a problem which uses all of our tools of conservation momentum and conservation of energy. Let us suppose that a wedge with mass capital M rests on a horizontal frictionless surface. A block with mass little m starts from rest at the top of this wedge and slides down the inclined surface. If the incline has a height h and an angle of 60 degrees and is twice as heavy as the block, then let's imagine what happens as the block slides down. Initially, there is zero momentum of the system, and as the block starts to move to the left, the incline has to start moving to the right because there's no friction to hold it back. We may ask, when the block is halfway down the incline, what will be happening to the incline? Let's try to see where all of the tools of conservation of momentum and conservation of energy can get us. We know that there's going to be velocities of both the block and the, and the incline to be solving for. It's first helpful to develop a coordinate system, and let's set one down such that the x-coordinate runs horizontal to the surface of the, of the ground. The y-coordinate runs straight up and down in the direction of gravity. Let's see what we can do with conservation of energy. We've, we've had many problems where as an object falls, it exchanges potential energy to make kinetic energy, and that will be true here as well. Initially, if there's a potential energy of mg times half of an h that's exchanged to make kinetic energy, that makes kinetic energy of not only the, the block itself, but of the incline. So we must write 1 half times capital M times the V of the incline squared plus 1 half times the mass of the block times the velocity of the block squared equals the potential energy that's, that's been exchanged, which is the mass of the block, times g times a half of an h. This allows us to simplify a little bit if we remember that capital M equals twice little m and we have v incline squared plus one half of v block squared equals one half gh. We still have two unknowns here, the, the velocity of the incline and the velocity of the block. So we may seek out another equation. So we'll see what we can do with conservation of momentum. Momentum must be conserved in the x direction because there are no net external forces in the x direction. We may note, however, that momentum is, it is not conserved in the y direction because there is a net external force from gravity acting on the y direction. So if we write in the x direction that momentum is conserved, well, initially the momentum in the x direction is zero because the mass of the block is not moving. At the end, however, when the block is halfway down the incline, the mass of the block times its x component of velocity plus the mass of the incline times its x component of velocity must equal zero to equal the initial momentum. Here then we find that the x component of the block's velocity is equal to minus the ratio of the two masses times the x component of the incline. Since the incline weighs twice as much as the block itself, we may substitute in for that ratio and say that the mass of the, the velocity x component for the block equals mi minus 2 times the x component of velocity for the incline. In other words, the block will be moving faster than the incline, which makes sense because the incline is quite heavy. It's important to note that the incline is only moving in the x direction, therefore its x component of velocity in magnitude equals its velocity, and we may say that the, therefore that the velocity the x component of the block equals minus 2 times the velocity of the incline. We still have too many unknowns. We have the velocity of the block and the velocity of the incline, and we have the x component of the velocity of the block. Now we need to relate the block, velocity of the block and the x component of the velocity of the block. Here we have some assistance because we know that the block is moving down the incline and the incline has a 60 degree angle. So we may say that the x component of the block's velocity is equal to the magnitude of the velocity times the cosine of 60 degrees times minus 1 because actually it's traveling in the negative x direction. The cosine of 60 is a half and therefore the x component of the block's velocity is minus 1 half times the block's, block's velocity magnitude. 
And now we can eliminate the velocity of the block because we have two equations and two unknowns. We would like to know the velocity of the incline. We can say that the velocity of the block equals four times the velocity of the incline by combining the, this equation with this equation, the x getting rid of the x component of the velocity of the block. We can use this expression for the velocity of the block and insert it into our expression from conservation of energy and find that the velocity of the incline squared plus 16 halves times the velocity of the incline squared equals 1 half gh. This is 18 halves over here uh, times the velocity of the incline squared and we find that the velocity of the incline has to equal 1 over the th 3 square root of 2 times square root of gh. This was a somewhat complicated example in the sense that it involved two directions of motion and we had to use both conservation of energy and conservation of momentum to solve for the final answer.